In this video, we will show how to save data to make it available in another scene. It will also show how to enable saving data in a game session so that it's available the next time the game is open after it's terminated. So for example, um, now the game is playing. If I change the color value to blue and then change this speed value to five and click on save data, the data will be saved. Now I could terminate the app or the game. When I play a game, the value of the color and the speed would be set to black and uh, the speed to zero. But once I do load data, you will see that the color and the speed has changed to the data we saved previously. I'll start by creating the UI elements, which are mainly buttons. Okay, so with that being done, I'll look under the assets, I'll create a new folder for the scripts. We'll call it scripts. And inside that uh, script folder, we'll, call, we'll create two scripts files, C sharp. One will call it data manager. And the other will call it, or you can call it anything. Um, we'll just call it set get data. Once these two files uh, are created, I need to assign them to two game objects. So one game object, I'll call it data manager. It's a new empty game object, and I will just assign the data manager script to it. And I click on it, make sure the data manager script is there. And the other game, uh, game object, I'll create another game object for the other script. It's an empty game object. You could call it anything. I'll just call it um, save load data. And now if I, I'll just click and drag the script to that game object and make sure it's there. Now I'll double click on the data manager script to open it in Visual Studio. And this is the code inside the data manager file. And I'll put a link to GitHub in the description where you could download this file. So what we need uh, at the beginning to define the variables that we need to store or pre to, to persist between the session and the uh, scenes. And in, in our case, I have two variables, which are the color and the speed in, in form of float. And once that done, in this part, you will need to also add these variables in part of class named save data. And also you need to add these variables here as well in this part. So we have a method called write to data, which write the data into a default uh, folder location. Uh, it's in the persistent data path. And we debug that path here so you could access it easily uh, later. And also there is a method called called load data, where you, we could load these uh, the, the, the two variables, which are we also we need to redefine here. So yeah, the variables will go in this part, in this part, in this part, and will be defined here. So save the file and go back to the Unity editor. The use of the other script is so the data manager is the script where you save and uh, master script where you save and load data. And this is just a text, uh, sorry, a test script and through which we'll show you how to, you could read and, uh, sorry, save and read or load the data. So I'll just double click it to open it. And this is the context of the set get data script. And uh, I'll put a link to the GitHub uh, in the description. So uh, in, in any other file, when you want to access our data that shared between all the uh, sessions uh, uh, and the scenes, we could all we need to call is data manager dot instance, which is the data manager is the name of the script and the instance is the instance we defined here. And then we call the variables from that we define in that uh, file, which is the color, the speed. And so every in any other file, 
uh, script that we need to call the shared color and speed we use data measured on instance dot the variable name so here uh, we set their values and here we got or get do did they get values from them and uh, yeah that's it and uh, so whenever you want to write the data in other words saving you use data manager dot instance to write the data to uh, write to call this uh, write data here so to write the data to the file over here and whenever you want to load the data just call data manager instance don't load and it will load the data from that file that we saved to. Uh, so if we save the data, or save the file and go back to the editor, I just need to assign the two methods for save and loading the data to the two buttons we have. So this is one of the buttons and this is the other. So the save data buttons and we know that the scripts that contain these two methods it's under set get data which is part of the game object called save load data so i'll select this button save data uh, button and go to on click click plus and then drag the save load data game object into none and then go to set get data script and then select the uh, on uh, uh, save on click that's done and then I'll select the other uh, button and click plus for on click and drag the game object that contain the set get data which is save load data drag it here and go to set get data script which is here over here and select the method a which is called uh, load on click so now if i uh, click play i'll just uh, ch change to full hd resolution and then i could select the save load data because it has these scripts that has these color value and speed value uh, variables we had over here so i could just now uh, it, by default the color is black and the speed is zero so I change the color to blue and then we'll change the speed to seven and if I click I'll just turn on the console if I click save we'll see that our, our data has been saved in this file that's offered by default and so that's done so if I close the or stop the play or terminate the app or the game. Now click play again. We will see that the color value and the speed value has been reset to default, which is black and zero. But when I click load the data, it's supposed to load the data from the file we saved earlier. So by and it that what it does. So we'll see the color value has changed to blue and the speed value to seven. It's also worth to mention that some types of data cannot be saved using this method and that that's the issue here that's not all data types could be serial serializable and comfortably or easily been transferred to json and read from json some complicated type of data cannot be done and in this case you will do the same over here but in this part you will just change them to string for example and write them to file and then read them from strings using using your own defined method thank you please like subscribe and click the notifications button to help me make more videos like this